Hi guys, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about net zero energy buildings. Let me introduce myself. My name is Vinay, and if you are visiting my channel for the first time, don't forget to subscribe my channel and also click the bell icon for getting notifications of our latest videos. So let's start our video. So what is NZEB? Net zero energy buildings. So Definition A net zero energy building generates as much as energy as it consumes over the course of a year. However, an additional connection to the public energy grid is required when renewable energy generation cannot meet the building's energy load. Means you know most of our energy comes from energy grid, but net zero energy building, the energy source comes from solar energy as it generates its own energy for utilization purposes. The electricity generation through the solar energy is low that's why we use some power in the winter season but the most of the power comes from the solar energy that's why it is known as net zero energy buildings and there is also a term called gray energy gray energy is the energy or primary energy required for the construction of a building that is transportation or sale or disposal of the building material or etc so this gray energy is not taken into account during the calculation of the net zero energy building. And now we'll discuss characteristics of net zero energy building. The decisive factor for energy efficient construction is to minimize the heat losses and use passive energy, which requires implementing a range of structural and energy related measures. So you have to take some measures to decrease the energy losses during the day or night. So the structural measures, let's discuss some structural measures like large south facing window areas should be remain unshaded even in winter. As a result, solar radiation warms up spaces which leads to less heating energy being required. And in order to save energy and achieve lowest possible heating demand, optimum insulation and insulation of the exterior walls, roof and floor slab are necessary. So high air tightness contributes to building energy efficiency as it limits or outward air leakages and windows can be a source of thermal bridging and heat loss for this loss. For this reason, it is best to ensure use of least triple glazed windows. So these are the structural measures you have to implement in your own structures to reduce the heat losses and to utilize the more energy sources you have. And next we'll discuss energy related measures. So energy losses mostly commonly occur due to frequent or incorrect ventilation. To avoid this, a modern ventilation system should be installed. This ensures optimal circulation by extracting stale air from the space and supplying fresh air preheated by a heat exchanger. Generation of on-site renewable energy mainly through installation of solar and photovoltaic systems by means of absorption, solar systems convert solar energy to heat energy while photovoltaic systems convert solar energy to electricity. Heat pumps are used to produce additional heat. A heat pump which absorbs the heat from the surrounding air, example the outdoor air, the ground or groundwater and brings it to the room temperature by means of compression and energy efficient equipment in net zero buildings also contributes to the lower possible electricity consumption. LED lightings, at least A++ appliances and smart home solutions should be standard equipment. So by these measures, the energy losses can be minimized and we can achieve net zero energy building. And next we'll discuss advantages and disadvantages of net zero energy buildings. So first of all, we discuss advantages of net zero energy buildings. Environmental and climate protection resulting from a low energy and carbon building footprint, independence from energy suppliers and electricity and fuel cost developments, and healthy spaces without high temperature fluctuations and drafts due to modern ventilation systems, and low running energy costs due to largely self-sufficient energy supply, and use of renewable sources like biogas, wood, and instead of fossil fuels like oil and gases. And next, 
the electricity surplus from photovoltaic systems can be sold to the grid and you can make profits from that. Net zero energy buildings are eligible for subsidies and this varies for different countries. You can check the subsidies by visiting your government portals and check there whether there is any subsidies available for installing these net zero energy buildings. And next, disadvantages of net zero energy buildings. High construction and investment costs due to installation of energy generation plants as well as complex designing and complex planning. Amortization of investment costs only after several years. Despite an annular energy balance, net zero energy buildings are not energy self-sufficient because you are using the energy from grid during winter seasons but we can see there is a energy balance what we are using throughout the year that's why we call these buildings as net zero energy buildings so this is the definition about net zero energy buildings and advantages and disadvantages and what are the measures to be taken and everything what we discussed in this video we already made videos about green roofs and also how to keep your roofs cooler i will give those links in the description you can go and watch the videos and if you like our video please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe our channel and also click the bell icon for getting notifications of our latest videos thank you see you in the next video